Welcome, 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 and good morning to each and every one this morning. I am Sister Rhonda Stephen, and welcome to yet another morning of devotion with HEDM. Happy am I to grace your present, praise God. Um, this morning, let me take this time to say to you, thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing to all of our morning devotion. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Today's devotion is based on a young lad, praise God, who became Israel's first king. The Bible records two stories of how Israel's first king, whose name is Saul, is chosen to be king, praise God. We would have read in 1 Samuel, the ninth chapter, that God informed Samuel that a young man who is looking for his father's donkey will come to him for information. In other words, back then Samuel would consider the seer in Israel. Amen. Who today is a prophet. And we know that back then seers were okay. So Saul would have gone to this young, to this seer to inform him about his father's donkey whereabout. And when he does, Samuel is instructed by God to anoint the young man king over Israel. Um, we would have also read in 1 Samuel 10 chapter that Samuel gathered the people together and chooses the king by casting lots. So we would have seen one of the anointing was done in secrecy and the second was done in the open. So we give God the praise. You see, back then in Israel time, um, the story went on to remind us that, you know, we got to be careful of what we ask for. And it is important that we follow the rules and the commandment that was given to govern us. Praise God. We are also encouraged that it is important that we would walk in obedience and as i go on you were getting we would get a little into the story why i said it is important that we walk in obedience praise god um first and foremost who who was king saul um saul was the son of kish he was from the tribe of benjamin saul came from a wealthy family and the scripture declared that he was tall dark and handsome in his appearance it also states that there was none, not a man, amongst the son of Israel more handsome than Saul. One could have imagined the appearance of this handsome, tall, dark man. Praise God. Um, Saul, in Hebrew, his name is pronounced Shahol, which means ask for. And as I stated prior, that the elders of Israel would have asked Saul to anoint a king because they wanted a king based on the fact that Saul, both son, Samuel, sorry, both son were leaders. They played a role, but in playing the role, they disobeyed every command that God would have given them. And at that time, Samuel was well stricken in age. So the elders would have asked Samuel to anoint a king, whereas it grieved Samuel in spirit that they would have asked for a king and knowing Samuel, knowing that there was already a king that sits on the throne. And in grieving Samuel had, God would have said to Samuel, why grieve? They did not reject the Jews, me they rejected as their king. Praise God. So God gave Samuel the authority to anoint young Saul as king over Israel. Praise God. When we look at King Saul, like every Bible character story, the life of King Saul serves as a mirror for us to uncover our own faults, confess them, to God and make changes, praise God. When we look at King Saul's walk in the book of First Samuel, in his early career, his fatal mistake was made when he disobeyed God by failing to completely destroy the Amalekites and all their possession. Because at that point, God has commanded him to do so because they were a group of people that was always warring against Israel. 
Amen. A key part of the conditional covenant between God and Israel was obedience. And we would have seen that obedience is heaven's first law. Um, but Saul, as God's anointed king, was responsible for keeping that command. Praise God. King Saul accomplishment. Saul was chosen by God himself to be the first king of Israel. Saul defeated many of the enemies of the country, praise God, meaning Israel, including the Ammonites, the Philistines, the Moabites, and the Amalekites. He united the scattered tribe, giving them greater strength, which was Israel, praise God. And we would have also seen that scripture tells us that he reigned for 42 years. His strength, King Saul, was courageous in battle. He was a generous king. Amen. Early in his reign, he was admired and respected by the people. His weaknesses, Saul could be impulsive. Amen. He acted unwisely. His jealousy of David drove him to madness and it thirst for revenge. More than once, King Saul disobeyed God's instruction, thinking he knew better. Praise God. Doesn't that sound familiar? <laughs> lesson, life lesson. God wants us to depend on him. Praise God. When we do not and we rely instead on our own strength and wisdom, we open ourselves to disaster. God also wants us to go to him for our sense of worth. Saul enjoyed his popularity with the people, forgetting he had been appointed by God as king. Saul's first alliance was, alliance was to God as is ours. We should not forget, as Saul did, we are all God's first servant. Saul's jealousy to David blinded him to what God had already given him, praise God. When we compare ourselves with others, we become confused. We want what they have instead of using what God has equipped us with for our own specific mission. We can stray from God and try to get what we want on our own. But could I say it to you, life with God has direction and purpose. Life without God, could I say, is meaningless. Allow me to encourage you today. God expects total obedience, not partial obedience, with excuses, praise God. When God ordered, ordered ordained Saul, to completely destroy the Amalekites, including their livestock, Saul speared their king and some of the choice animals. Not only did Saul did that, but Saul then lied to Samuel saying the livestock would be used for a sacrifice. Though he knew better, though he knew better, he did what he thought he could have done. But can I say to you, that is a sin. And it is always, and sin always adverse to consequences. Allow me to repeat myself. Saul thought that he knew better than God. That is a sin. And it always has adverse consequences. Praise God. Let me say to each and every one that is listening Oh, that is looking on this morning. Obedience is the first law of heaven. It is, con it is the cornerstone upon which all righteousness and progression rests. Praise God. It consists in compliance with the divine law, in conformity to the mind and the will of God. Obedience requires total subjection to God and his command. So could I say to you this morning, obediency is heaven's first law and we are governed by the law of God. So I pray God this morning that you would continue to be encouraged and that you would walk in obedience. May the God of heaven bless you and keep you. See you tomorrow for our another morning 
of devotion with H-E-D-M.